Let's take a look at a few more examples of partial fractions. This time we're going to have not just linear um, distinct factors. We might have other types. So we have this 4x minus 1 over x squared minus 4x plus 4. First step, factor the denominator if it's not already factored. We know that this is going to factor nicely into x minus 2, x minus 2. Okay, because we know that two numbers that multiply would be 4, but add up to negative 4, negative 2, and negative 2. But that's the same as 4x minus 1 over the quantity of x minus 2 quantity squared. All right, so completely factored would be written as this. And so now what we can do is we can decompose this because now we have repeated linear factors. Okay, so repeated, it's repeated twice because there's a multiplicity of 2. So it's repeated and linear. Okay. So we have 4x, 4x minus 1, and then x minus 2 squared is going to be equal to a over x minus 2 for the first power, plus b over x minus 2 squared for the second power, that repeated power. Just like we've done in the previous, we're going to multiply everything by the common denominator of x minus 2 squared. Okay. Now notice that on the left and right hand sides, there's two of those three fractions in which everything's going to go away. In the third, we just get rid of one of the powers of x minus 2. Okay, so this actually turns out really nicely that we have 4x minus 1. It's going to be equal to a quantity x minus 2 plus b. If we distribute, we have 4x minus 1 equals ax minus 2a plus b. And now we notice that we only have one factor on each side that has a coefficient of x, right? And so in our system, right away, we can say that a is equal to 4, all right? So this a and this 4 have to be equal. Now for the other one, we have minus 2a plus b is equal to negative 1. But we already know that a is 4, so we can substitute immediately. So we get negative 2 times 4 plus b is negative 1. And this is going to be negative 8 plus b equals negative 1. So b is going to be 7. And so our, our partial fractions, we know that a is 4. So we get 4 over x minus 2. And we know that b is 7. 7 over x minus 2 squared. Okay. All right. So that's it for that partial fraction. Okay. So this might be the easiest one we've seen so far. However, a little bit more difficult is this animal, x cubed minus x plus 2, x to the fourth plus 2x cubed plus x squared. All right. So first thing we need to do is we need to factor the denominator. Okay. So I'm going to factor an x squared from the denominator, and that leaves me with x squared plus 2x plus 1. Okay, so just factoring an x squared from these three terms. All right, and then I can factor again. And I know two numbers that multiply to be 1, but add up to 2 are 1 and 1. Or I can write this as x squared, x plus 1 squared. All right, so we have both distinct and repeated factors here. Okay, so this is going to be a linear but repeated. This is a linear repeated factor. OK, so the way I'm going to set this up, it's not going to be nice, but it could be a lot worse. So x to the fourth plus 2x cubed plus x squared. That's going to be equal to a over the first power of x plus b over the second power of x plus c over the first power of x plus 1 plus d over the second power of x plus 1. All right. And of course, we know that this factored into x squared. So let's make sure we understand that this factored into x squared, x plus 1 squared. All right. Because we just fact we factored basically that thing into this. All right. Now, just like we've done before, and again, this is going to get nasty, but could be a lot worse. So we're going to multiply everything by the common denominator of x squared, x plus 1 squared. All right, so this is going to take a little bit of doing. 
and then x squared, x plus one squared. All right, so now we're gonna simplify. On the left-hand side, everything simplifies. On the right-hand side, for A, one power of the x's is gonna cancel. For B, two powers of x are gonna cancel. For C, one power of x plus one is gonna cancel. For D, two powers of x plus one are gonna cancel, all right? And so what we're gonna be left with, we have x cubed minus x plus two. We have ax, x plus one square, b, x plus one square, cx square, I'm sorry, yeah, cx square x plus one. Sorry, we only canceled out one of those. And then dx square. All right, so as you can imagine, this is going to get really nasty. All right, let's foil things out. Just keeping in mind that x plus one squared is x squared plus two x plus one, okay? And we know that because, well, remember when we factored this, we factored this thing right here into x plus one squared. So we just use that trick where we go back to the beginning to foil it out so we don't have to do it again. So multiplying out the left-hand side, okay? If I distribute ax to all three terms, I get ax cubed plus 2ax squared plus ax. Multiplying b, and remember this is x squared plus 2x plus 1, we get bx squared plus 2bx plus b. This is easy, okay? So we get cx cubed plus cx squared. And then finally, we just have the dx squared. All right, now I know this looks bad, okay? But on the left-hand side, notice that we're missing an x squared term. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna throw in zero x squared. And so I'm gonna get x cubed plus zero x squared minus x plus two. Now we're gonna match powers up. And we're gonna create a system. Now notice that this system has four variables and four equations, okay? Because we have a cube, a square, an x, and nothing, okay? So let's see what we can do with this. Everything that has a cube has to add up to one, okay? Because it's a one x cube here. So we have ax cubed and we have cx cubed. So we would have a plus c is equal to one. So that's not too terrible to start with. Zero x squared. So we have two a, we have a b, we have a c, okay? So it looks like we're gonna get all of them in here. And then we have a dx squared. Now that's equal to zero. Okay, so that's not too bad because at least we have a zero there. But you'll notice that it gets significantly easier after that because we have, for the x's, we have ax and 2bx. So we have a plus 2b. So remember, we're leaving off the x's. So a plus 2b is equal to the coefficient of x on the left-hand side, which is negative 1. And then finally, the easiest of them all, we have b which is gonna be equal to two. All right, so out of this system, right away we know that B is two, that's good. We can substitute back in right here. And we have that A plus two B or two times two is equal to negative one. That's four, we subtract four from both sides, A is negative five. We also know that A plus C is one. So negative five plus C is equal to one. Looking at this first equation, that means that C is six. Finally, if we substitute everything back into this equation, we're able to solve for D. So we have two times negative five plus B, which is two, plus C, which is six, plus D is equal to zero, right? Remember, this is 12, this is negative 10. So this should be two plus D equals zero or D equals negative two. All right, so mercifully, we could just go back through and substitute into all the partial fractions for A, B, C, and D. All right, so remember A was negative five. So our answer is gonna be negative five over X. 
Remember, b was 2, and 2 had a denominator of x squared. Okay, so we get plus 2 over x squared. We had that c was 6, so we would have 6 over x plus 1. And then we had d was negative 2, and that was x plus 1 quantity squared. Okay, um, if you really wanted to, you could write this as minus 2 since we have plus a negative, all right? And this would be the decomposed fraction for that, okay? So a little bit nasty, okay, just being able to do this algebra from foiling out, okay? Um, the best advice I can give you is to take your time, okay, and write out all the steps, okay? A lot of times when I see students make errors, it's not because they don't know what they're doing with the partial fractions, it's just because they're making algebra errors. All right, so in the last video, we're gonna look at how do we go through and how do we solve quadratic types, okay? So we've taken a look at the linear types. Last video, we're gonna have quadratic types.